This is one of the most interesting stories that I've crossed so far, and that is the Uranium Bull thesis. There are a few reasons why this market is so interesting, but the most important one is that the price of Uranium is not as transparent as other commodities. Before we move ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as that helps me make more videos like this. There are two important parties in this market and they determine the supply and demand in this market and ultimately the price of uranium and they are the nuclear reactors and mining companies. Because of the high initial cost of building nuclear reactors, the cost for the fuel is very small compared to the total cost of building them. And so the price of the fuel is amortized with the price of building the nuclear reactors. So for nuclear reactors, the price of uranium is not as important for them. What they care is the security of the supply of uranium, as they might receive high penalties for not supplying energy for a region. And so the price of uranium is determined by the availability in the market and for what quantity nuclear reactors want to buy. And so the more uranium is in the market, the lower the price and vice versa. And so to figure out the price of uranium, we can just see what's the supply of it in the market and the quantity that nuclear reactors are buying in a certain period of time. Though there are some intricacies on how the market works, let's go over them. First, nuclear reactors order the fuel in contracts that last for 5 to 10 years. And a lot of these contracts are due into the incoming years. Not only that, there is already a deficit of uranium in the market and this deficit will tend to increase in the incoming years as mining companies have been closing and nuclear reactors are being built. That in turn might cause uranium prices to go up. The interesting part of this market is that if the prices of uranium go up, the profits of mining companies tend to go up as well because it takes a long time for new mining companies to go online. It typically takes 7 to 10 years for new mines to come online from application to deployment. This could mean that the stock prices of mining companies can go up substantially in the incoming years. That's the same thing that happened in 2014 when there was a uranium bull market. And the structural backdrop might be even stronger this time around. Okay, so let's take a look at the many driving factors that are driving this. First, as I mentioned before, there are no new mines coming back online before the price of uranium hits $50. And as you can see in this model, where the green line represents the demand from nuclear reactors and the blue bars represent the total production base, there will be a large deficit that will only increase over time and that in turn might increase uranium prices. Looking at past data of how much uranium was bought by nuclear reactors, we can see that a lot of contracts happened 8 to 10 years ago and that probably means that they are due to new contracts in the incoming years as contracts take 5 to 10 years. So that means that there will be a lot of new incoming contracts that need to be filled as reactors need a source for their energy. Let's take a look at uncovered requirements in the incoming years. It will grow linearly in the incoming years and this supply is hard to come by. They all need at least $50 uranium to all come online and they take a long time to come online as you can see in this table. Adding to that, the secondary supply market is decreasing. The secondary supply is built by a process called underfeeding. During the enrichment process of uranium, where you take it from 0.71% to 4.5%, if you have excess capacity of uranium, you can wring out more uranium than the actual order calls for. A great analogy is an orange juice maker. If I wanted to get a gallon of orange juice, I could do that. And if I wanted a gallon and a quart, I could squeeze out more juice. If I kept squeezing it, I could do that too. 
that's what underfeeding is. When there's excess capacity, you can wring out more enriched uranium and sell it to the market. When a lot of reactors in Japan went offline after the Fukushima disaster, Japan started selling the excess capacity and started underfeeding its uranium. They added the equivalent of 25 million pounds of uranium into the market. That's 1.5 times McCarter River mine. That's the biggest uranium mine in the world. But as Japan revamps production and the Russian program megatons to megawatts is ending, there's no more excess uranium in the market. That means that the total supply on the secondary market is going to zero. Not only that, the total inventory for nuclear reactors are below historical levels. All these factors together might cause uranium prices to go up. And as a consequence of that, the stock value of mining companies might go up as well in the incoming years. The same thing happened in 2004. So given this thesis, let's take a look at some uranium companies. By the way, be careful with some ETFs because they might include no mining companies. First, let's take a look at Chemical Corporation or CCJ. It's the second biggest uranium mining company in the world. It accounts for 18% of the total uranium production. In its assets, it includes MacArthur River and Cigar Lake. In its latest quarter, it shows a net loss of $61 million, but two of its biggest mines are closed due to COVID-19 and still generated around $1.6 billion of revenue. Its market cap is around $5.1 billion. This company might be the least risky bet and might see its price go up as uranium prices go up. The other company that I think is interesting is the Nissan Mines. Its headquarter is in Canada and it engages and develops uranium in the McKillian Lake and Waterbury Lake. It owns around a quarter of the Makilian Lake, which produces around 12% of the world's total production of uranium. The bigger attraction here, however, it is its 90% interest in the Wheeler River. The two mines that are projected here would have a 14-year lifespan and would and have a combined 109 million pounds of uranium. One of the mines in this lake, the Phoenix mine, could have the lowest cost of production in the world. If uranium prices keep going up, these projects could be very enticing. But in this year, this company only generated around $10 million of revenue and its market cap is around $500 million. The price might be high because of the projection of the creation of these mines. All in all, betting in these mining companies means that you're betting that the uranium prices will go up, plus the fact that the stock prices of the mining companies will go up because of that. We will see what happens there. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to leave the comments down below. I hope you have a great day. Bye.